Hello, Geometry. Hope you're having a good day so far. Um, today we're going to look about look at determining the area of a regular polygon. Remember, a regular polygon's got all the same sides and all the same angles. You know, something like that. Although, you know, that's it's not quite regular. That would be a regular hexagon if I could draw one. Um, I have a little bit of a cough, so if, if I'm coughing a little bit from time to time, forgive me. Let's move on. So here's a better regular polygon. This is a regular octagon. I got it from the internet and dumped it into the slide here. We're going to discuss how to get its area. And the strategy is uh, straightforward, and hopefully you, for many of you, it's obvious what we're going to do. We're going to divide it up into triangles. Chop it up like that. Every regular polygon has a central point here and can be chopped into a number of triangles equal to its number of sides. So this octagon could be chopped into eight identical triangles. So all you really need to know in order to get its area is the number of sides, obviously, and then one piece of information about the polygon. And you could be given the number of sides and the side length, I told you how long this was here. You could tell me theoretically how the area of the polygon. You could be given this length, it's called the radius, it's the same thing for a circle, it's the distance from the center out to one of its vertices. Or you could be given this length, okay, which is from the center to the middle of an edge, and notice it makes a right angle. It takes this isosceles triangle here and divides it equally into two parts, splits it down the middle. That, of course, is the height of this isosceles triangle, which is important for getting its area. This is called, I wasn't sure how to say this until I looked it up, it's called the apothem. Strange word, it's unfortunately a word you're going to need to know. The apothem is the length from the center of a regular polygon to the center of one of its edges. It's always going to be a little bit shorter than the radius, because you can see the radius is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Apothem is just one of the sides. <clears throat> Anyhow, any of these three, apothem, radius, side, and the number of sides is enough to determine its uh, regular polygon's area. So the strategy is you know, we're going to divide the polygon into triangles. You don't actually be able to have to be able to draw the entire polygon. You'll see what I do when I solve an example problem on the next slide. And we're going to get the angle here at the apex at the, of the triangle, of the of one of these triangles. That's easy. And we'll divide the triangle in half using the apothem. And we're going to use trig to get the base and the height. We might be given one of them, so we only need to get the other. And then get the area of the triangle using one half base times height and then multiply by the number of sides. That'll give us, you know, the area of the whole thing. We get the area of one of these triangles and we got a lot of copies of it going around here. That'll give us the area. Let's go on. Anytime, um, if you feel like, oh, I really want to copy all this down, um, these videos are available online. Uh, Bobby can show you where she's playing them from. They're on the class website. Or you can ask her just to pause real quick, but let's not pause too long. I want to move along here and <clears throat> get to the, um, so you can get to the homework. Because you can watch them again online if you need to pick up something you missed. So, here's my example. Find the area of a regular octagon with side length 6 inches. So there I'm telling you the number of sides, because an octagon... And I'm telling you the side length. So that's the two pieces of information you're going to need. You're going to need the number of sides and one of those three measurements I showed you on the previous slide. So I'm not even going to draw the whole octagon. I don't need to. I just draw a triangle or two to give a sense of what's going on in the picture. So here's um, a few triangles in my octagon. It's not a very good drawing, and, and I didn't try to make it very good. Your drawings don't need to be fabulous in order to be able to do these. You just need to be able to know, okay, so here's one of the triangles. So the first step is we're going to um, get the angle here at the apex of one of these triangles. That was step one. Now notice here, I just drew a little circle here around the central point. That, of course, is 360 degrees. 
but there are eight triangles radiating off here because it's an octagon. And I didn't draw eight, I just drew three of them, but you know that there's eight sides. There's eight triangles. So that means, and they're all the same, so this 360 degrees here is divided into eight equal pieces. That means this angle at the apex here is simply 360 divided by the number of sides. That's 45 degrees. So that's, that's easy. It's always going to be 360 degrees divided by the number of sides to tell you the angle at the top of the triangle you're going to be working with. And almost all your work is done in this isosceles triangle. So, next step. We've got our 6 inch side given in the information. And then I'm going to pull this triangle out right at nice and big because I'm going to be putting some work in here. Uh, don't skimp on your drawings. Uh, students most often make mistakes when they draw tiny little drawings or they don't draw, try to draw anything at all because they think they're oh so clever and they can just do it really fast and if they just draw these pictures carefully which takes what two or three or four seconds more uh, they'd solve themselves a lot of problems. So anyhow here's the isosceles triangle we're going to get the area of that we know that's six inches long we put in the height we don't know the height and that's what we're going to use trigonometry to figure out the height so we can get the area of this triangle. So there's my 45 degree angle from before, 360 degrees divided by 8. <clears throat> and I need half of that. And it's the cutting in half and the doubling that's the hardest part of these problems. Is What gets cut in half, what doesn't get cut in half. This is why I'm stressing, draw this picture. Mm. Draw this. It really, really helps you make, for making stupid mistakes. You know, here's the isosceles triangle. That's one of the eight pieces of the octagon. You carefully put in this height. You label things carefully. It takes just a little bit of extra time, and it prevents you from making silly mistakes. It helps clarify what's going on. So we're going to do trig on this right triangle over here to figure out this unknown height. And I know since this was 45 degrees from 360 divided by 8, this is... 22 and a half. That's half of 45. Alright, so this link down here is 3, which is opposite the 22.5 um, degree angle. 3 is being half the 6. There's the hypotenuse, which I'm not really interested in here. And there's the adjacent side, and that's the height. That's what I need to figure out. So, I've got opposite. Oops, wrong place. I've got opposite and adjacent. I know the opposite is 3. I want the adjacent is h. From my SOHCAHTOA, I know tangent is the one that links opposite over adjacent. So I write tangent of the angle. 22.5 degrees is opposite over adjacent. I need to solve this for h. So I know those are opposite and adjacent. Tangent 22.5 for my calculator is 0.4142. That's still 3 over h. So then I'm going to multiply by h divide by 0 0.4142, that tells me the height. <clears throat> height is 7.24, I guess this would be inches. And now that I know the height, now I just work my way back to the area of the octagon. So the area of the isosceles triangle, I drew this nice and big, and it's still red to make it clear, we're getting the area of this triangle not just this. Again, pictures, pictures, pictures to keep things clear. I'm going to get the area of this triangle. So I've got its base 6 and its height h, which I just figured out over there. 1 half base 6 times height 7.24. Calculator tells me that's 21.73 square inches. And then of course the octagon is 8 of those triangles. Going back to this picture up here, eight of those triangles going around. So eight times twenty-one point seven three is one hundred seventy-three point eight square inches. So that that example. So you can pause here if you want to jot anything down. But the next slide, I'm going to have you try it, and you can work together to try to figure it out. So I'm going to move on. Pause if you need to. So you try it. <coughs> Find the area of a regular decagon with radius 16 millimeters. So I, I want you to pause in the class, pause the video for four minutes, and work together at your tables 
see if you can work this out. It's a little bit trickier because you have to do two trigs, uh, two trig calculations now to get the base and the height. All right, so here's the picture. I'm not going to try to draw the whole thing. There's one of the triangles. I know that there's going to be ten of those. Decagon, ten sides. So there's ten of these triangles going around. So that angle at the apex, since there's ten of those triangles going around, is 360 divided by ten, which is 36. But I got 16 millimeter radius. That's the distance like this, center to vertex. So this is the hardest of the three things I could tell you because it's neither the base nor the height of this triangle. I could also use a shortcut formula we talked about that would make this quicker, but I'm going to work it out the long way for practice. So I need the area of that triangle, so I recopy it. There's its height. I know that's 18 degrees in there. I've already split it in half. That's half of 36 from up here because that's the angle I'm going to be using to do trig. I don't want the whole angle I just because I'm going to do trig on the right triangle over here. There's the 16 millimeters, hypotenuse, adjacent, opposite, label for trig. Got the base and the height of my triangle that I'm trying to figure out. So <clears throat> I'm going to get the base first. I know the hypotenuse. I know the hypotenuse is 16 millimeters. I'm going to get opposite. Opposite, however, is just half of the base. So I'm going to make that really clear in my work. I'm actually going to write one half B for the opposite. You'll see. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's sine 18 degrees is opposite, which is half of B, looking over here, notice, divided by 16. Cutting in half is the trickiest part of this. So now I just need to solve this for B. So multiplying by 16, 1 half B is sine 18 degrees times 16. Then I don't want 1 half B, I want B, so then I multiply both sides by 2. So 16 times 2 is 32. B is 32 times the sine of 18 degrees. Calculator tells me that's 9.89 millimeters. Uh, height's easier. It relates adjacent, which I don't know, to hypotenuse, which is still 16. Cosine is what links adjacent and hypotenuse from my Sokotoa. Cosine 18 degrees is adjacent H over hypotenuse 16. So I multiply both sides by 16. I had a 16 times the cosine of 18 degrees, which calculator tells me 15.2 millimeters. So now I have my base here and my height here. So I get the area of this triangle and finally get the area of the decagon. Area of the isosceles triangle, one half base times height. I'm using the base and height I determined before. So the area of the decagon is 10 of those. 752 square millimeters. Um, help one another if this is confusing. See if you can figure out what you might have done wrong. I'm not there to help you, so you're going to have to help one another out. Don't just copy, that doesn't help you. Let me show you what the homework is. It's not from the, it's not from the text. You've got this chart that I'm going to build here. It's going to have the number of sides of the polygon, and then one of those three measurements and the area. And so I'm just filling this in. You can just copy this down. Just ask, uh, just leave this projected up for everybody to copy down. So you're just going to fill in all of the missing information in this chart. So it's got five sides and side length eight. What is the apothem? What is the radius? What is the area of that regular polygon? This is all for regular polygons. Then another problem. This is the second problem. Six sides, and I tell you the radius. How long is the side length? How long is the apothem? What's the area of the regular polygon? The last one's a little bit weird because the radius is given as R, so that means this box and this box and this box are all going to be in terms of R. You have to use your calculator to work out what some of the numbers are, but you're still going to have R every time. You're not going to get rid of R. So it's always a little trickier. Instead of being given a number, you're given a variable, but you do the same procedures. You're still going to do the trig. You're still going to solve for base and height, work out these different things, but they're all going to be in terms of R because this is in terms of R. Anyhow, that's all. About 15 minutes. You've got the rest of this time to work, and... 
I'll ask uh, your sub, whoever it is tomorrow, either Bobby or Mike Paimani, if you're in period five, to <coughs> um, collect this at the beginning of class. Um, after you may be taking a question or two and going over some things. So, have a good day. I'll talk to you later.